Yo, what's going on, Geminites? It's your boy, Gem Mint. I'm here with another recent reads. This time, we're going to do Jonathan Hickman's Avengers Omnibus Volume 2. I am going to go into spoilers with this because I don't really think there's much to talk about without going into spoilers. So if you uh, are ready to be spoiled, stay tuned and check it out. Y'all, first of all, um, I mentioned this is volume two of Jonathan Hickman's Avengers uh, run. You can see both Omnibus here makes this nice spine uh, together in this thing. Uh, first things first, it has a cover price of $125. I uh, bought it off in stock trades for 50% off. And it collects um, Avengers 24 through 44 and New Avengers 13 through 33. This picks up where the other uh, omnibus left off, the the incursions of uh, the multiverse. Basically, the multiverse is breaking down, and you got to remember this takes place uh, when we still had the Marvel six one six universe and the Ultimate universe with Ultimate Spider Man, Ultimate X Men, the Ultimates, Ultimate Fantastic Four. So you really got to keep that in mind because the main goal of this was to consolidate all of these uh different universes and just make one shared marvel universe think crisis on infinite earths with dc back in the 80s so that being said um the multiverse is breaking down and what's happening is that there's an incursion point in each universe that uh is the the, the point is the earths so once the earths two earths come together uh, there's a couple of things that can happen. They can both smash together, which would destroy not just the Earths of each universe, but each entire universe. You could have map makers, black priests, different type of beings that will try to destroy uh, one of the other Earths to prevent the entire universe from being destroyed and just the destroying the Earth. And then you have our heroes in the 616 universe who uh, reformed the Illuminati and are trying to find a way to prevent uh, the incursions from happening or at least to prevent our Earth from being destroyed uh, and definitely our universe. So the big ethical dilemma here is um, if it came down to it, should we destroy another Earth from another universe that's going to threaten our entire universe? Should we destroy and kill uh, billions of people to save countless of trillions. That's the whole ethical uh, ethical dilemma. And of course, Tony Stark, the uh, multitasker that he is, uh, creates a weapon in order to destroy another Earth if all else fails. So then, you know, the first omnibus leads up to should we ever do this? Could we ever do this? And as you could imagine, in this volume, they do have to go ahead and do that. Actually, uh, none of the heroes are up for it. Um, Black uh, Black Panther couldn't do it. Cap couldn't do it. Uh, so of course our boy uh, our boy Namor does it, uh, and he continues to do it because the aftermath of that action leads to uh, Iron Man being uh, detained. Captain America finds out that the Illuminati tried to mind wipe him in the first volume, and Namor feels like. Uh, it's what needs to be done. So he rounds up some people that will continue to destroy other Earths to prevent our universe from being destroyed. And he rounds up what's called the Cabal, which is made up of Thanos. I don't remember the names of these other guys. I think the Black Swan is one of them. One looks like Call Obsidian, um, Maximus uh, from the Inhumans. So they put together this uh, this Cabal, which not only goes to the other universes where an incursion will encounter our earth but they enjoy killing everybody on that planet and destroying the planet and that's where it kind of gets a little sick and twisted but the biggest theme and my biggest uh concern or the biggest thing i was looking for is what the hell caused this who caused it because i was already a little over it enough with the incursions we get it the red sky the blue sky the, the colliding of the earths and we end up finding that um it's a race of beyonders from beyond our known realm they're in this white space kind of place and they're not the beyonder that we met in the marvel universe uh years ago with uh 
you know, the Beyonder who was in, responsible for Secret Wars. But um, a race of Beyonders that's beyond him and makes him look like a, a child and they're like adult versions. And this is all basically um, an experiment that this Beyonder race has done to see what would happen. I'm not going to try to pretend like I know what's going on during this whole book. A lot of it went over my head. But what ends up happening is this basically um, leads into Secret Wars, what, 2015. Uh, it ends up uh, being that Do uh, Dr. Doom is the saving grace of everything. Him and the uh, Molecule Man. Basically, they find that Molecule Man is the trigger and that he is the same person in every known universe. Whereas I would be Gem Mint in this universe. In that universe, I might be Near Mint. In this universe, I might be very fine. You know what I'm saying? But he is uh, consistent. And it's almost like the one, right, with Jet Li. And uh, he finds out that he, uh, he basically needs to kill the... Um, was it Molecule Man in every universe in order to thwart the Beyonders experiment? So, as you can imagine, the infinite amount of universes become hundreds of thousands, then become thousands, then become a dozen, and then become just two our universe and the ultimate universe. Our heroes destroy the Beyonders and they end up going to war with the ultimate universe, and that's where this book ends and leads into Secret Wars. So, you know, that's just my recollection. You know, I, I'm not the best at uh, retention when reading all this stuff. Um, a lot of people love this uh, run. It's not one that I would recommend, to be honest. I think it was a little, uh, like I said, a lot of it went over my head. You know, maybe if you're smarter than me, uh, it would be no problem. The artwork was all right. It just didn't really feel like a story that needed to span over so many issues. I mean, you're talking about like 70 issues or so between the two books, you know. But um, that's basically the gist of it. We'll flip through the artwork right now, and I'll probably recall some other cool things that happened. But a lot of it felt very much like Civil War. Cap was pissed off at Iron Man, and there was a big battle with those guys. And, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So let's check out the artwork. All right, guys, so let's take a look at the actual omnibus. Here is the front cover of the dust jacket. We saw the spine multiple times. Here's the back, your boy Doom. The actual hardcover is all white on the back and spine. Just got that Avengers logo here. Right, so let's flip through this thing, man, and see what's going on. Um, with all Hickman Omnibus, they don't have the covers in between each. They just have like the title of the story. They still were doing this... Um, Avengers world type of Avengers machine to show you who was going to be in the uh, issues. But I feel like they kind of got away from what that originally was. I don't know. It just seems to me like, I don't know. It wasn't really a big deal anymore. So this is basically just going to show off the artwork. And if I can recall anything cool, we'll talk about it. So this speech, everything dies, you, me, everyone. They had this speech in this book. Like a million times. I was so sick of it by the end of the day. A lot of repetitiveness, man, with that speech at the round table, showing the same speech at different round tables from different universes. And, uh, oh, this was cool. This was like an evil Avengers from one of the multiverses. Here goes an incursion. That was cool with those Avengers. This is cool. This shows kind of like how the the adaptoids or the super adaptoids end up becoming. I don't know if these are the map makers. I got, like I told you, a lot of this went over my head. But I think that's what it was kind of trying to say. Uh, what else do we got here? Another Everything Dies speech. There you go. What else do we got? Cap. That's from the first Omni when he... Um, Prevents the first incursion from using the Infinity Gauntlet, but the Gauntlet becomes destroyed. Okay, so this was something that was like um, similar to the Fantastic Four by Hickman. Captain America, like uh, Interstellar style, kind of travels through time and stuff. And he ends up going to like Betrayal plus, he goes 50,000 years in the future. He, he, he goes randomly into the future throughout that storyline, but that was kind of crazy. 
It was kind of cool, though. So what else? Black Panther stuff was pretty cool. I didn't understand any of the Doctor Strange stuff, man. It was kind of crazy. A lot of it was preparing for the uh, for the fact that they can't stop the incursions and that eventually everything dies. And the Earth dealing with it and things like that. It shows how different our universe handled it compared to the Ultimate Universe where we only told our heroes and didn't tell the civilians. But the Ultimate Universe, they told everybody. You, you don't really find out about what's really happening until like the last couple of issues. This is the um, Shi'ar going to destroy our Earth because they know that otherwise if our Earth gets destroyed, the whole universe will get destroyed if it happens during the incursion. So they were ready to sacrifice us. Here's like what I'm talking about, the Beyonders. See, they're coming from beyond our known realm. So here's Doom with, is it Molecule Man? And he's he's basically showing Doctor Strange that, he, that he's been in the, in the know of this thing for the whole time and uh, what his plan is and how he had to create the Black Priest. Uh, he had to create a religion that would kill the Molecule Mans in every universe because he couldn't do it himself. I think it was the Black Priest. I might have been wrong about who his following was. This is the ultimate universe telling the world that they're going to die. And here's the Captain America versus Iron Man fight. Very civil war. And all because Iron Man knew that when he was creating that weapon, that he was going to have to use it. He knew there was no way to stop what was happening and that he would have to destroy every Earth that would, would threaten ours by coming in contact with it through the incursions. So that's basically it, man. That That's how it ends. Well, no, it, it actually ends with the uh, showdown between the Ultimate Universe and the 616. Everything dies. Once again, the, the theme. And then Secret Wars basically, you know, goes into uh, the aftermath of this. Then you just get covers at the end. Variant covers for Avengers 24. And some variants are way better than others. This is the Alex Ross variant, which I love. Super Adaptoid, Connecting Jumps, The Cabal. I can't tell if Doctor Strange was good or bad in this, man. I don't know what the hell he was doing the whole time. Doctor Strange was trying to sell his soul to have the power of a god to stop the incursions. I guess his intentions were in the right place. This is a dope connecting cover, man. A lot of good back and forth with Black Panther and Namor in this because Namor, uh, they basically killed each other's pl uh, homes. Just looking at the variants. That's dope. There you go. I love these homage covers. X-Men 1 homage. X-Men... I forget. It's the Cyclops and Jean Grey. I don't know what this one is. I know this is the uh, Avengers 4. This is X-Men 142 homage. And you get some sketches in the back.
All right, y'all. There you have it. Uh, this was basically part two because I did a recent reads on the first volume of uh, this run a couple months ago. But that's the uh, review of the uh, Avengers by Hickman Omnibus Volume 2. Uh, personally, I didn't love it, and I know that's not a popular opinion, but that's okay. We don't all have to love the same stuff. Um, I've been reading a lot of Marvel lately. I've been reading a lot of Valiant. I really got to do a DC recent reads. Uh, so I don't know. A lot of my Omnis are Batman heavy. I definitely want to read Punisher Max by Garth Ennis, and I know that's another Marvel title. I kind of want to read some Brubreaker image stuff because they could be quick reads, fall, uh, Fade Out, Velvet. I still want to read Deadly Class. So I got a couple things that I'm going to do. Uh, Iman it just finished Werewolf by Night Omnibus, so she'll do a recent reads on that. Um, Manimal just read TMNT uh, Deluxe Edition Volume 6. I think I'm going to knock that out too, and we'll do a recent reads together because uh, I was up to date up into that book. Anyway, make sure to drop a like on the way out. Drop me a comment. Tell me why I should have liked this more than I did. Or if you agree with me, let your boy know. Make sure to subscribe to the channel for more recent reads, which are basically storyline reviews uh, and daily content, whether it's a recent reads, a recommendation video, a haul video, a statue unboxing and review. We do weekly live shows, and we do weekly comic book auctions as well. Those are every Sunday, live shows on Saturdays. And we got a lot of cool stuff coming, man. New York Comic Con's coming around the corner. Your boy will be there in attendance, and we'll drop uh, some videos from there as well and meet up with a lot of uh, Geminis. So, y'all stay minty. Peace. <laughs>